you today. Thanks so much for being here. I am thrilled to jump back into this series uh, called The Struggle is Real. But w- so turn in your Bible to 1 Peter chapter 5. That's in the New Testament, 1 Peter chapter 5. It's a small book, but uh, we're, we're going to pull a powerful passage from it. Um, let me tell you why you're doing that. Let me have your attention. If you are eligible for baptism, meaning that you have recently decided to follow Christ, or that you, um, you you're kind of have a fresh walk, and, and maybe you got baptized a long time ago, Go, um, you know, and, and as a kid, but now you you want to make it serious. You need to sign up for baptism. Sometimes I think we think baptism is kind of a, just a symbolic thing, but it is significant, spiritually significant. Something happens in our hearts when we're baptized. Baptism is so important that Jesus Himself actually was baptized. So so God in the flesh was actually chose to be baptized. And so if you haven't been baptized, or again, if you were baptized as a kid, but you you really now know your faith and you understand it and own it. Uh, you need, you need to take that step. Go to Connect Central today. Our baptism coming up on November 20th is going to be incredible. I promise it will be spiritually significant for you. And so I, I want you to go to Connect Central today, sign up. It will be something you, you, you'll just never regret it. It's going to be incredible. Now, we're jumping back in to The Struggle is Real. And if you haven't been here, this has been a great series because it really is it's helping us with this thing that appears in all of our lives. Most of us tend to move in life towards what's easy. We don't really care for the things that are, that are difficult or the struggles, and, and the same thing happens in our faith. And when we do that, we've discovered that, that we're kind of missing out on something that God wants to do in our lives. See, if you're always going for what's easy, you're going to miss out on some of the best things God has in your life. We have one of these um, kind of a central kind of theme for this whole message or a principle, and here's what it is. God's best is often delivered through the hardest tests. It's so true that God's best is often delivered through the hardest tests. And so my, my kind of my imploring to you has been, don't avoid any longer that struggle, but instead kind of lean into it because God's trying to deliver you his best. Like I, I would say, you know, that you, all of us have something that we know God's asking us to do, like have a conversation with someone, apologize, forgive, you know, start a habit, end a habit. Like God's got something and it's something you've been dancing around and hoping to ignore and hoping it would go away. Don't do that. Just lean into it and say, you know what? I'm going to decide that, that, that this is how God's bringing his best to me instead of trying trying to just work my life around this thing that I feel like is such a struggle. And, and, and this has been my challenge. If you'll do that, if you'll just say, you know what, I'm going to do that hard thing, I just think you're going to see God's best. And so I've been challenging you during this series to, to step out and do that. We started with the struggle of waiting. Nobody likes to wait. It's such a struggle. But here's what we learned. We learned that God's best is always delivered when we wait on his timing. I can't expect God's best in my timing. And so we said, you know, if you'll just you'll lean into that struggle of waiting, you're going to find God's best for your life. We, then well, last week, we, we kind of talked about this universal struggle, maybe the one that's more difficult than all, which was the struggle of forgiving. You know, they're, they're, everybody, no matter if you've been a believer for just a few days or you've been a believer for a long time, Everybody has this struggle with forgiving people. But here's here's what we learned. If you'll lean into the struggle and decide in spite of your feelings to forgive someone, you find peace and joy and and your freedom and and your purpose just becomes alive and active. And so we've just really been focusing in. So today I am going to share with you, honestly, this is the one that kind of birthed the whole series. I think it's such a struggle for so many people that that I'm going to spend a whole segment today on how to just push in to the struggle of releasing now you say, well, what are we releasing? What are, what are we releasing? We're releasing care, concern, stress, anxiety, worry. I mean, all those things that weigh heavily in our hearts, that, that, that we're, op- we're given an opportunity by God to kind of give them those. And he says, you give me what concerns you, and I'll give you my peace in return. But man, do we struggle with releasing it to God. We just, it's really difficult for us to do because we just don't know if we can trust him to see it through. And, and, and it's just, it, some things are so big of a concern to us that we want to keep it to ourselves, And so today I'm going to talk about the struggle of releasing. Now, um, I'm going to start with this story. So Kayla and I recently had to go to Lowe's. And, and when I say had to go, I, I don't really like to go to Lowe's that much. It's not one of my favorite things to do. We don't go that often, but we had a project. And so we go. And, and, and one of the reasons I don't like to go to Lowe's is because Kayla kind of moves to the lead. Like she, she becomes like the one who tells me what to do and pointing in every direction. And I, I'm just kind of there to push and pull the cart. I, I'm just a muscle. And so we go down every aisle and she keeps adding stuff and adding stuff 
stuff and adding stuff. To, to, by the end, I'm like struggling to push this big old cart down the aisle. And, and, and it's funny, you just have to picture it like I'm the lone husky pulling the sled and Kayla's like whipping mush, mush, you know, through, through the, the, the department. It's just, it's not the most enjoyable experience. So I, I just do everything I can to avoid it until I discovered that you can order online and like schedule a pickup and somebody else does all the pushing, all the pulling, and, and they, they carry the load and put it in your car. Like you don't have to, you just pull up, pay for it, and you're done. I mean, it's the most incredible experience you've ever had. That Somebody else gets to carry your load. You don't have to pull, you just order it and you're done. And, and it kind of leads me to this. I wish that that's the way life was. Like that that was an opportunity that you could dial somebody, you could send an email, and somebody else would carry the concern, the stress, the anxiety, the the, the the, kind of that, that weightiness that we all carry around. I just wish that that existed. And, and here's what I know about you is that there have been times in your life, maybe even this morning, where you feel like I do at Lowe's. Like you're, you're, you're just, stuff keeps getting added on and it's heavy and you're pulling this weight and you're killing yourself trying to push this big old weight around in life. And, and here's what I've kind of learned is, is that, that life just adds a lot. Like, like without us asking for it, life adds like deadlines and bills and busyness. And then other people add, you know, relational dynamics and friends and parenting and marriage. And then other, you know, we even add to ourselves like, you know, dreams and goals and standards we want to keep. And then, and then there's the unforeseen thing in life that comes and it adds a lot. It's like, you know, whether it's, you know, death or a divorce or a job loss. And, and here's what I've kind of learned is that in, if I could take each one of those individually, man, I can handle it, but it just never comes that way. It's like all at one time and it just overwhelms me, kind of just blows me away. It's so heavy when you have to carry all this stuff in life. And, 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 and in scripture kind of puts it this way. I want to show it to you in scripture. Psalm 34, 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Now this word afflictions is interesting. It actually is talking about a, a form of torture where they would make someone kind of stay stationary on the ground and they would pile rocks on them one at a time until they were completely crushed by the weight of all the rocks. Like, like, that just feels like life to me. Like, like something at work, something with the kids, something in my marriage, something you know, that I have to do, another deadline, another concern, another stress, until you know, before you say that there's just so much weight on us and, and, and it, just, it feels like it's crushing us. You know, and, that, and that's ultimately what I, what I think we, we struggle with, is, but we don't even realize how dangerous it is. Like you have become so used to carrying around all that concern and care and, and worry, you, you don't realize how dangerous it is. Like, like, let me show you, in, in your, your, when you carrying all your concern, it's crushing your physical health. Like you were not designed to carry anxiety. When someone says to you, I'm worried sick, they're telling you the truth. But there are some, doctors have reported again and again, hundreds of thousands of people could get out of the hospital if they could just learn to relieve stress and worry and anxiety in their life. Not only that, does it crush your physical health, it crushes your purpose. When you get busy and overwhelmed, life feels meaningless. I mean, it just feels like it just like you're just you're in the rat race. Like like you're not doing what you were created to do. You're just you're just kind of enduring. You're just trying to stay survived. And that, let me just say, if that's you, that's why Connect Track it here is so important. Connect Track is where you step out of the rat race and someone helps you kind of learn about your gifts, how God designed you, and helps you get in your purpose. Because God designed you with a purpose, you just, you're not living it because you're so busy and you don't know it. And so let us help you know it. And we would love to let you see that you can make a difference in other people's lives. But, but as long as you're allowing all this to crush you, it's going to be real difficult to do that. Now, not only that, but also it crushes our relationship with God. You see, when you're stressed out, you're more apt to sin. When you're overwhelmed, you're more apt to sin. Now, and when you're, you're really kind of worrying and stressed out, God seems very distant. It's not that he's distant. It just seems that way. You, it's, like, it's like your sensors, your, your ability to sense him. There's something messed up when you've got all this weight on you. Now, if that describes the road you're traveling, if you'd say, you know what, I, I, I'm, I feel like one at a time, it's just crushing me, well, I've got some good news, because there's, that, that was part A of the verse, here's part B. Many people, many, of the affliction, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. 
See, God, God has never intended for you to live like sleepless nights, heart racing, mind racing, chest pains. That's not, not, that's not how God designed you. In reality, God has actually made it very clear that he is more than willing to carry the weight of your life. He's more than willing to do it. The struggle is we just don't like to give it to him. We, we, we tend to kind of hold it. We tend to, this is a major concern. This is something I'm really worried about. And, and we tend to hold it. And so, so here's the struggle is God's willing to take it and give us his peace for, for our concerns. But here's what it comes down to. Can you struggle and make the choice to cast it to him instead of letting it crush you? And, that, and that's really where it comes down to is that can you, can, can you cast it to him instead of letting it crush you? Now, I, I, let me show you what I mean by that. In 1 Peter 5, 7, cast your care upon him because he cares for you. I just want to be honest. This verse annoys me <laughs> because I feel like I've done it, but I don't see the results in my life. Like, I feel like I've prayed about it. Like, like, God, I don't want to carry this overwhelming weight. I don't want to be the one who's worried all the time and stressed. It's like, I'm not doing something I want to do, but yet somehow every time, it's like I pray about it, and sometime it, it, somehow it ends up back in my heart. Like, I, I think I give it to you in a moment at the end of service. I, I, I pray about it, and it, it, somehow it just is like, it keeps coming back. What's the problem? Is this only temporary? Does this, is this only work for moments? Does it not mean that I can live that way? I mean, what, what's the problem? Well, if that's you and you're like me when you read that verse, I think you have a problem with your cast. That, that really may be the issue. Because this is a promise that you can live out every day of your life if you don't have a problem with your cast. Let me explain it. This word cast is best pictured by someone picking up a stone and throwing it into the ocean. Like, like as though you picked up your care and threw it into the ocean. Now, if you, if you picked up a stone and threw it into the ocean, there's no way you could find that stone. I mean, it's, I don't care how big it is, it's so, so small compared to the vast and powerful nature of the ocean, it would be washed away, and there's no way you could ever locate it again. It is impossible to ever find. That is what God offers us, is that we, when we toss our cares to him, that, that we can have permanent peace because our cares are nothing in comparison to the size and the vastness and power of our God. That, that's what we're given. That's not how we cast. See, we, we cast more like a fishing rod. Like we cast our cares into the ocean, and then we reel them back in. And then we cast them into the ocean, and we reel them back in. It's like, God, I, I'm giving you my kids. I'm not worried about my kids. Well, I, I'll fix those kids. I'll, I'll take care of it. God, I, I, I'm going to let you handle this, job, this thing at work. No, 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 no. I, I, well, I, I didn't want you to handle it that way. I'll, I'll take it back. I mean, that's what we do is we end up giving this stuff to God, and it comes back to us because we reel it back into us. And you know this is true because you've gotten up at some point and, and you've said, God, I've got this situation, let's say, at work, and I really need, I'm trusting you to handle it. God, it's yours. And by the time you get in the car, you're already thinking about how to fix this situation. And, and not only that, as soon as you get to work, you find somebody else and say, now let's get together on how to fix this situation. And then by the end of the day, you're enacting your plan, never giving God a chance to enact his. And we wonder why we carry all this weight, why we carry all this concern. It's because we keep casting it and bringing it back to our lives. We, we've got to realize that, that, that we're not alone in this, though. Because I know when you see something, it's like, oh, man, another thing I'm doing wrong. No, 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 we're not alone in this. As a matter of fact, what really kind of spurred this for me and made this a huge impact in my life is a couple months ago, two very prominent, nationally known pastors resigned abruptly. And it sent shockwaves through kind of the church world because they were at very influential churches, significant ministries, and they were in the prime of their life. I mean, in the prime, and they just, they just gave it up and walked away. And so as we started to look into what happened and as they released statements and, and everybody was kind of shocked, here, here, though the details of their circumstances were very different, here's ultimately kind of what they said. At some point, my relationship with Jesus fell out of top priority and the stress that came from leading a vast, big, old, gigantic organization and church overwhelmed me. And it eroded everything in my life. Here's what they were really saying. Even as their pastors, they teach this, they, they help other people. At some point, they forgot how to cast, and they got crushed. 
And, and I don't want that for my life, and I, I don't want that for your life. So, so we've got to get this settled. How can we really release something to God, and how can we leave it with him? Like, not where we're bringing it back. So I'm going to give you four things, four simple, practical things that if you'll do these, I promise you will not live crushed, but instead you're going to live at peace that God will give you. But it's just going to be a struggle to do these things. So you, but if you'll do them, I promise you, you're going to live with the peace and joy that God promises, and you're going to let him carry the stuff in your life. Here's the first one. To permanently release my concerns, I must recognize God cares. Now, you, you say, well, that seems kind of simple. Can we move on to number two? No, no, I want you to see this. L let's look at the verse again. 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your care upon him because he cares for you. It's interesting when I read that, it's, it's kind of like this seesaw to it. Like as long as I'm, I'm aware he cares for me, it's easier to cast my cares on him. But the moment that I forget he cares for me, the more I start keeping my cares. You see that there in that verse, how it's like, when I forget God loves me, I start keeping things because I'm not assured he's going to take care of it. But the moment that I realize how much he loves me, it's easy to give him stuff because I realize, wow, he, he, he's going to take care of it. So you have to, to consistently, daily even, maybe recognize how much God cares for you. The first thing you've got to do is you've got to recognize that. I mean, just take for a minute and consider that from the highest peaks of earth, like Mount Everest, to the lowest crevices, to the, I mean, to the core of the earth, God's presence is there. Like, there is not a place that is absent of his presence. There's not a star, planet, or galaxy, even the ones we haven't discovered yet, that, that it is in independently operating. He cares for all of those. And you say, well, why does that matter to me? Because that means he's where you're not already caring for things that you don't even know you'll eventually care about. Like, he is so interested in your life and my life that, that, that it literally, he sees you on a sub-anatomic level. I mean, he sees every particle of your being. And you say, well, why does that matter to me? Because that means he's already providing for the cares that you don't even know you'll have. Like, he, he's already figured out, I'll get ahead of them and go ahead and fix that before they even come to it. Like, it's so great is his interest in you. Scripture tells us he's numbered the hairs on your head. Like, that's a little obsessive to me. I don't know how many hairs are on my head, and I, I kind of like me, but he does. He knows that about me, and he knows it about you. I mean, it is unbelievable. And then what it teaches us is there's no problem is too big for God's ability or, or too small for his attention. Nothing's too big for him, but yes, nothing's too small for his attention. See, God can do anything he wants at any moment he wants because he's got all power. That means that he can work out any situation that you think cannot be worked out. Even the worst parts of your life, the part you think thwarts the word of God and his promise in your life, he just takes it and somehow makes it work to where it's ministry and it, it helps you go forward and it helps you fulfill your purpose. It is unbelievable to consider how much he loves you. And when you start to understand that, you're going to be able to release your cares a lot easier. You need to know that there's not been a second of your life, not a breath that you've breathed that God was not aware of. And when you grasp that, that he can answer all questions, solve any problems, heal any hurts, squash any fear, protect you from any attack, all of a sudden faith starts to rise in your heart and you're like, you know what, I guess I can trust God with this because I can see how much he cares for me. You've you got to realize that, that if he cares for you, why in the world do you have any cares that you don't think he can handle? I mean, it, it, here's what I've learned. People who don't know, people who don't realize that God loves them, end up carrying way more weight in life than he ever intended them to carry. Now, here's the second one. Repent of pride. Um, recently, Kayla and I came home uh, from going to the, to the grocery store, and we had a trunk full of groceries. And, um, and I am just the type of person that I would rather basically come to the brink of killing myself carrying all the bags at one time versus make multiple trips. I don't know if there's anybody else like that, but I'm just that person. It's like, I'm going to carry them all at one time. And, um, and, and I remember in this particular time, I was like, you know, loading them up. And Kayla said to me, she said, you know, you, you probably should make multiple trips or you'll break something. And to me, that is like her saying, you little girly man, let me get your walker and help you carry these groceries. Like it, it is a direct challenge to my manliness. So I thought to her, well, I'll show you. So I like, I load every bag possible. Like it is cutting off the circulation. I'm blue armed, shaking, but I've got all these bags and I'm going to show her. And there's one item left with all these bags I've got to get. And it's a watermelon. And, and so I, I pick up the watermelon and I'm, I'm, you know, shaking and can't feel my arms. And, and I'm going and I, and I trip as I touch the threshold of the stairs and throw the watermelon to where it just splatters all over my garage. 
And the worst part of it was that Sydney, our youngest, she, she doesn't even she doesn't even know she doesn't hardly say anything, and she just starts going uh oh uh oh uh oh <laughs> like she knew that I had made this bad decision. And, 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 and here's here's what I want you to catch: often we can't release our cares because we won't release our pride. See, for for, for some of us, we, we you got to realize it's not okay that you just keep telling yourself, "I'll just keep pushing." And if I try a little harder and do a little more, I can make this happen. That's pride in your life. Like, like worry is a form of pride because it tells us that we're the ones that can solve the problem. Like that this is going to be fixed in our strength. And it, it, it's pride. Let, let, let me show you how it plays out in, in this passage. I've added verse 6. Now this is the way that it probably reads. I think you can get this. This is the way it probably reads in your Bible. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Period. Everybody say period. period. Next sentence. Cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. This is the way we live, this verse. As though verse 6 has nothing to do with verse 7. Like that being humble has nothing to do with casting cares. The problem is that that's not the way Peter wrote this. If you were to translate this directly from Greek, here's what it would say. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that, that at the proper time he may exalt you. Everybody say, comma. Oh. Casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Peter says, there's, th this is one sentence, that you can't cast your cares without humbling yourself. What, what he says is, is that as long as you, you keep pride, you can't cast your cares. Because ultimately, pride, it, it, casting cares is, is saying, God, I can't handle this. God, I can't do this. God, I have to give you this. But, but when we think we can fix it, and we think we can do it, and we can handle it, and we can just keep pushing, we're going to be like me. And here's the deal. If you want to commit to keep pushing, that's fine. But you need to know you're going to have the ugly crash just like I did with that watermelon. And so, so you've got to realize that, 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 that there is a sense of pride in all of us that wants to keep these things. See, worry is the constant attempt to be in control. Faith is the constant comfort God's in control. And they can't be in the same body, in the same mind, in the same heart at the same time. It, it can, it, this is, we're really quite dumb when we tell God we can handle something. I mean, it really doesn't make any sense, does it? I mean, God's come and offered to handle everything from your finances to your kids to your job. And yet we would go to him and say, you know what? I can handle this part. Like, how, how ignorant is that of us? Why keep the pressure? Why keep the weight? Why keep the pride? Just in one prayer to say, God, I'm killing the pride and this problem, and I'm giving it all to you. Because I just realized that I'm not smart enough, and I'm not wise enough, and I'm not strong enough, and I can't see far enough. That I, God, I'm just going to give it to you. And so we can't, we can't cast our cares while keeping our pride. You say, well, how do I get rid of pride? Well, I'm glad you asked. Here's point three. Retrain your response. So you're going to recognize God cares. You're going to repent of pride. But you're going to retrain your response. Here's what I mean by that. Most of us react to situations in our lives. And our reactions come from our emotions. Meaning when, when that report comes on your desk, stress comes. When that deadline is set, anxiety comes. When you get that report, then all of a sudden worry comes. Like immediately you have a reaction and usually it is, it is, is emotional and it's going to take your heart into fear and frustration and that's just your reaction. But there is a difference between reacting and responding. See, reactions come naturally. It's just what you do. But a response is a decision on how you're going to act based on what you've received. And, and here's why that's important. Because Peter tells us, in view of all this, make every effort to react, no, respond to God's promises. Make a decision, make every effort to make a decision about God's promises. Here's what that means, is that something's going to come into your life, and immediately you're going to sense that building sensation of worry and fret and frustration, and you have a choice right then. Now, initially, you're going, to, you're, going to respond, you're going to react, but you better choose very quickly to respond with faith that reminds you God's still in control, and here's why. Because the longer you let anxiety build in your heart, the bigger it gets. 
like worry gets bigger, stress gets bigger, and eventually if you let it stay in your life long enough, it starts to control you and you don't control it anymore. There will get a point that if you allow that concern to remain in your life without casting it together, if you're going to allow that, it will eventually run you over and overwhelm you. And so it is essential that as soon as you sense your heart going in that direction, as soon as you kind of start getting that tension headache, that you address it and respond spiritually. You've got to retrain your heart to respond the right way. I'm going to give you, say, what, what do I need to do? Let me give you two. First, immediately pray. I mean immediately. Like, like, don't let it wait, don't think about it, because the longer you do, the bigger it's going to get. Immediately, when you sense that coming, pray. And, and here's why, is because anxiety either tr- triggers despair or prayer, and it's your choice. See, worry, it increases pressure. Prayer releases peace. They're two different things, and if you want to live in peace, you've got to retrain your heart to respond in, in a spiritual way you got to say, God, i, I got to give this to you. I can sense that my heart is heading in a bad direction. And so I'm going to give this to you immediately. And, and when you do that, you say, well, I, I'm not really much for prayer. I don't know. Here, it doesn't have to be poetic. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be this beautiful written thing. You can simply say, God, I need you. I can sense my heart starting to be attacked by anxiety. And here's what happens is when we say that, it invites God in. See, when you say the simplest of prayers, God hears more than you say. He works more than you realize. And he's doing things you can hardly imagine just because of an invitation into your life. So immediately, you've got to pray. Don't give it time to swell. But not only that, here, here's what else you need to do. Continually carry God's promise with you. i got to be honest with you. I can't help you. You can't live this if you don't have a relationship with God's word. As much as my heart goes out to you, and I don't want to see you stressed, and I don't want to see you with sleepless nights and a heart racing, I, I don't want to see that. I can't help you if you don't have a relationship with God's word. The Bible is God's number one way of talking to you. And, and, and it's, 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 his, it's his love letter to you. It's his comfort to you. It's his advice. It's his direction. And, 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 and if you don't have a relationship to the Bible, you're ignorant of everything God's given you. And so, so you, you, you say, well, I just I can't handle this. I mean, I don't know. It's confusing. I don't grasp it. I, I, don't, I can't remember it. Here's the thing. God knew that about you. And so he, he made, you, made sure that you were born in a time that you have this incredible gift called Google. Like, like he, he said, I know they're going to struggle. Put them in that century because they'll get Google. And all you've got to do is, is, is just type in um, scripture on blank. Whatever it is, scripture on marriage, scripture on prayer, scripture on finance, and you're going to get a promise. You don't have to understand the whole thing. You've just got to get this one promise. And and let me say, you need to have a daily relationship with God's word because he has a daily promise for your life. And that's why we have a a Bible reading plan that's simplified for beginners. If you've not been a part of it all year, go to Connect Central today and they'll get you signed up. You can read it on your phone. You can read it, you know, in in your regular paperback version, whatever it is. But be be in the Bible because God's got a promise for you every day. So when you Google that promise, you need to keep it with you. You need to keep it on your phone, and and, and you need to maybe put it on a post-it note so that immediately when you feel that coming up into your heart, you read what God says about it instead of what anxiety is telling you about it. Now, I'm going to give you a little extra on this. Not only should you keep it with you, I'm going to encourage you to read it out loud. This is something that has drastically improved my life, is just verbalizing it. Let, Let me read you this passage in Psalm 107. Let the redeemed of the Lord think about it. Let the redeemed of the Lord consider it. Let the redeemed of the Lord keep it in their phone and pull it out every once in a while. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. That when you, there is just something powerful when you verbalize a promise God has given you, that it extinguishes fear and it restores peace. It's just the craziest thing. You can feel like all pressure is on you in your office, and you read a promise, God, and it's like the weight of the world has been picked up off your shoulders, and here's why. Because faith comes by thinking. Faith comes by hearing, is what Scripture tells us. And it doesn't, you say, well, but Pastor Joe, I, I, you know, you can't come to work with it. It didn't say you had to hear me. 
It just says you have to hear God's promises. So when you verbalize and your own voice verbalizes the, the promises that God's given you, it goes into your ears and faith is increased. It is the most incredible promise that if you'll live it out, that you can literally, you can just self-doctor. You got all this anxiety. You, got, you just open up God's word, pull out the promise that he's given you and say it out loud. And immediately it will change the atmosphere of what you're worrying about. It is unbelievable. But, but don't miss it. You got to do it quick. Because the longer you tangle with anxiety and concern and stress, the longer you put up with it, the greater chance that it's going to overtake you. So this is about retraining at your responses to be quick and quickly make a, a, a spiritual decision. Now here's the last one. Refocus on today. So you're going to recognize God cares. You're going to repent of pride. I want you to retrain your response. You've got to refocus on today. Can I... Can, Listen, most of the load that you and I carry has nothing to do with today. It's about tomorrow. Like most of the things that, that we concern with, it, it's always about something in the future. I, I remember when Sawyer was a toddler, we went to a, a, a playground, and we, there was a bunch of parents there, and they all had kids his age, and so they're all playing, and they're standing around talking. And, and this group of parents that I was standing beside, I could hear what they were talking about. They were talking about things they were doing to ensure their children, their toddlers, excelled educationally. Like, you know, baby Mozart and this toy and this, this field trip. And one lady said, she said, well, my son can already count. And, and so I really believe that that implies he will be a scientist or a physicist of sorts. And at that moment, I looked at Sawyer and he was eating dirt. <laughs> and I thought, my gosh, this lady's kid can do algebra and my son's eating dirt. And, and, and honestly, for the next few days, I worried about, I mean, do I need to get him a tutor do, 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 should, we, should I start, you know, maybe a second job to save for private school? I mean, should we start picking, you know, colleges? And, and here's what I came to realize, that um, I was wasting, by worrying about Sawyer's tomorrow, I was wasting the Sawyer I had today. When you, when you worry about tomorrow, you're wasting today. You, you're, you're just wasting it. You're, when you bring your Monday into Sunday, you are actually taking up the time God's trying to restore you today by worrying about something that he's going to prepare you for anyways. When, when you drag your week into this time with God, and you, you, you're so worried and so caught up, God, he's trying to repair you today. He's trying to build you up. He's trying to encourage you. And you, you've dragged Monday into Sunday. I, I want to show you this promise. This is incredible. Peter gives it to us. By his divine power, God has given us, help me with this word, everything we need for living a godly life if you ever meet anybody that says, you know what, I just I can't do that Christianity thing. It's just too hard to live out. It says God's given them everything they need. We have to, we can receive this all, we can receive all that by what? Coming to know Him. That, that literally everything you need is tied to your relationship with God. But here, here's what's incredible about this promise is He's given you everything you need for today. Like, he, he's given you all the, 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 the wisdom, all the strength, all the patience, all the creativity. Hey, guess what else is included in everything? All the time that you need. He's given you everything you need to be live blessed and at peace today. See, overload comes into our lives when we're taking on things that God never intended us to take on, to, on today. That's what overload is, is that you started to take on things God never intended you to have today. And, and, and when we refocus our lives, and, and let me just say, if you're here today, and, and this is one of those things where, you know, your, your, your issue is huge. Like, your marriage is breaking down. Your, your financial situation is dire. Like, you have this big old giant problem. You can only work on it today. Like, if your marriage is falling apart, just focus on being a great husband today. Like, like if your finances are a mess, just be a good steward today. But like, if your faith is breaking down and you, you don't think you're going to be able to, just, just love Christ today. Just today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about can you do it for a month or two weeks. Just, just today. Because he's given you everything you need today. Everything you need. You, you don't have, there's nothing that you're absent of today. And, and, and so, so just take that huge, big problem, whatever it is, just focus on what you can do about it today. When you refocus 
off of tomorrow and the future and what if I don't get into college and what if I can't pass this test and what if I don't get promoted and what if this happens and they leave me and this. When you get your eyes off of all that and refocus on what God has provided you today, you're going to find that you're going to live at peace. You're going to find that all those cares all of a sudden become God's and he'll, he'll work out tomorrow and the next day and the next day, but he's given you everything you need today. It's really about taking your eyes off that situation and turning them on to God who's already provided for the situation you have today. There's an um, inspirational figure named Corey Ten Boom. And she, um, there's been books about her, and she's written books, and there's, there's, she's, there's a movie about her life. But the Ten Booms were a family that lived in Europe, and they loved Christ, and they were watchmakers. And during World War II, they, they, because of their love for Christ and their, their, their disdain for what Nazi Germany was doing, they chose to hide Jewish families in their home so that they wouldn't be taken to concentration camps. And they did this for a long period of time, and, and, but eventually they were found out. And the Nazis came and, and took all their Jewish friends and sent them to camps. And as punishment, they also captured all of the ten booms, including Corey, and sent them to camps. And they, they were sent to these camps, and, and, and you know, they were all separated, overworked, abused, and, and, and Corey is the only one that survived. She lost her whole family in those camps. And when she was liberated by Allied troops, she devoted her whole life to doing two things. Preaching a message of forgiveness, which is incredible if you read some of the stuff, and encouraging people that no matter how dire the circumstances... God's going to be able to work it out. And one of the things that she wrote when she was in a concentration camp that helped her focus on not what was around her, but, 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 but really casting her cares is this, and I want to share it with you. She said, if you look at the world, you'll be distressed. If you look within, you're going to be depressed. But if you'll look at Christ, you'll be at rest. And that's so true. Because when I look at the stuff around me, I look at the reports that are due and the quarterly statement, and I look at what's going on in my kids' lives and where their grades are, and when I look at, at all the things that I'm, you know, that's happening on the news and what's going on in my neighborhood and in our city, man, I, I do become distressed. Like, I'm overwhelmed by it all. And then I start to look inside, and, 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 and I see where I've fallen short, and I wish I had done better, and I wish I could have done this, and I, I should have been a better that, and, and I do become depressed. But instead, if I take my eyes off all that and refocus on today and what God's given me, I find myself at rest. See, this really does come down to, it's just all about what are you looking at? What has your attention? God has given you everything you need for today. Here, here's my last statement to you. I, I just want this to submit in your heart. Stop trying to fix it and fix your heart on Jesus. Stop trying to fix it, whatever your it is. Stop trying to fix it and fix your eyes on Jesus. You can cast your cares on him because he cares for you. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. And as your pastor, I just want to pray over you. Father, I'm asking in the name of Jesus that you would touch every person here in a significant way that you would speak to their hearts today, Father. That first and foremost, they would just receive and have a revelation of your care for them. Even when they've been oblivious to you, you've cared for them. That God, I just pray today that, that your love would fill their heart and you would just, they would get a glimpse of how much you love them. So much is your love for them that you took care of the greatest problem in their life being separated from you by giving your son Jesus to die in their place. So God, if you can handle that, you can handle anything in their life. Father, I pray right now as, as they just receive that love that their hands would just come open and that, the, that, that they would release to you right now that aging parent who they love, but it's, it, it, by the care that they've got to give them, it's just, it's just overwhelming them. Father, that I pray that they would release that, that report that just came from the doctor that has planted seeds of worry in their heart. I pray that right now they would re, re, just release to you the family situation that no matter how hard they try, it's not been fixed. Just let that care become yours today. 
I pray that 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 concern for passing that class and that concern for graduating would just, just leave their heart and move to you. I pray right now that they would cast financial struggles to you. That, for, that, that, that third quarter report, that account they just lost, Father, that it would be released to you in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray they would release relationships to you, people who's, who they're so worried, how are they going to make it in life without that person? Let, let that just be released to you. I pray right now that, that concerns that have welled in their hearts for years, let them be released to you, never to return to them. And I pray in exchange, as they release these concerns to you, that God, your peace would be planted in the hearts of your people, the weight would be removed, joy would fill their hearts today. And I'm asking all this in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. I'm going I'm to pray for you in just a second. We're going to sing together. We've got just a couple things, but I, I want to take just a moment just, just bow your heads, close your eyes, considering where your life's at. If you're here today and you do not, you understand fully you're not in a relationship with Jesus. Like you're not in a relationship, you're not following him, but you have so much weight on your life, you want to follow him. Today I want to make a decision, Pastor Joe, I want to give you all this that is so heavy in my life, I just want to give it to God. Today I'm making a decision to follow Christ. I just want to give you a moment to make that decision If you would say today, yes, I want to make that decision, and I want you to pray for me, Pastor Joe, while nobody's looking around, can I see who who, who I I can pray for? Would you just lift up your hand and say, today I want to follow Christ, see if I can pray for you. I see that hand. Four people in the last service, I see that hand. See that hand. Today I want to follow Christ, will you pray for me? Anybody else? Three people, four people. See see that. Now if you raise your hand, I want you to look to the screen. There's a prayer there. I, I, I want us to pray it together. Heavenly Father, I admit that I am a sinner and that I am lost without you. I believe Christ died in my place, making a way for us to have a relationship. I choose to follow Jesus and his way for the rest of my life. Father, you see those four people? I pray right now the weight of sin and and condemnation and guilt would come off of them and the love of God would be poured into their heart. I pray, according to Scripture, they're a new creation. Let them be transformed. Father, I pray that that today you'd set their feet on a solid rock and let them walk a path that is a sure foundation that is you. Lord, we love you and we thank you for this miracle. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Now, I I want you to stand to your feet as our prayer teams come. We're going to sing together. There's this song that's kind of been a theme to this series for us, and all it does is kind of, it just is a prayer that you can hide in your heart. And here's how I hope you use this. You'll just take these few phrases, hide them in your heart, and on when Monday comes, whatever Monday is for you, and you sense the heaviness that it comes with, you, these, I'm just believing the Holy Spirit's going to raise these words to your heart, and then all of a sudden, your situation's going to be transformed. You'll literally sense cares leaving you, and him receiving them, and you receiving his peace. So let's just sing this together, and I'm going to come back and pray over you. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon going to have an awesome week. 
I just believe that in my heart, that you're going to be able to, to put this to practice and that God's going to use it, and you're going to have an incredible week. Where your weeks are normally overwhelming, I believe this week is going to be enjoyable and productive, and that's what I'm going to declare over your life. But if you're here today and you'd say, I'm overwhelmed with what's going on in my life, as soon as I say amen, I want you to come to one of our prayer team members. That's why they're here. They've been praying for you all week, so you'd say, I really need somebody to pray with me. As soon as I say amen, as we're dismissed, you come forward, let them pray with you. They would be glad to, and I promise you won't regret it. So Father, in the name of Jesus, let favor follow your people. Let blessing be on them today. I pray that Holy Spirit, you help them to apply everything that we've said today. And God, I'm just declaring a great week over their lives. That Lord, things that are normally weighing them down will not be so heavy. That things that normally overwhelm them will not overtake them. Father, I pray today they'd be blessed, that they would receive what you have for them today, refreshing to their hearts, and that this week, God, they'd be more productive blessed and at favor with you in Jesus name and if you receive it say amen 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 if you're here today and you need prayer please come forward now to everyone else I love you so much I can't wait to see you next week thank you for joining us today we hope that this message was an encouragement to you to live a life fully devoted to God for more information about Twin Rivers Worship Center or if you would like to partner with this church's ministry in st. Louis Missouri and around the world by giving visit us at our website at trwc.com.